Welcome to Rejoicing Heart Ministries. We hope everyone is having a great day. This is Robin Donna Litwin here to encourage you with the Word of God. Today we have a teaching about loving the way Jesus loves. Our reading is from John's first letter, chapter 4, verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. Today's teaching is called Jesus is Love. This verse was written by the Apostle John telling you that God is love and anyone that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. The Amplified Bible says it like this. 1 John chapter 4 verse 16 in the Amplified Bible says, And we know, understand, recognize, are conscious of, by observation and by experience, and believe, adhere to, and put faith in and rely on the love God cherishes for us. God is love, and he who dwells and continues in love dwells and continues in God, and God dwells and continues in him. This verse is telling you that God is love, meaning that God's being and true nature is love. Anyone that does not love others is not dwelling in God. Dwelling in God is having a continual relationship with Him, and knowing Him personally. When you dwell in God or fellowship with Him regularly, He dwells in you, and His love will be manifested in you towards others. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice from God that shows His love for us. God gave us everything through Jesus' death and resurrection. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16, quotes Jesus, telling you about God's love for you. John, chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus came here to give his life for every one of us to be able to spend eternity with him. Jesus paid for our salvation with his own life. This is the definition of love. Jesus was also quoted in John chapter 15 verse 13, telling you about God's love. John chapter 15 verse 13 says, Greater love has no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. This is exactly what Jesus did for you. He laid down his own life for you. The Apostle Paul wrote in his first letter about charity, referring to agape love, which is another word for God's kind of love. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 4 through 8 say, Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity vaunts not itself, is not puffed up does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Charity never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Paul wrote in these verses about a God kind of love and the characteristics of it. I have heard many ministers substitute the word God in these verses for the word love, or in this case, charity, to emphasize the point of God being love. Since Jesus is God, as quoted by him in John chapter 10 verse 30, which says, I and my Father are one, I thought it would be even more powerful to substitute Jesus for love or charity in these verses. Since Jesus is God and became a human in the flesh, and showed us how we should love like God. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 3, stated that Jesus was the express image of our Father in heaven. With that being said, it is appropriate to substitute in these verses Jesus for love, because God is love. Therefore, Jesus is love. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 4 through 8, with Jesus being substituted for love or charity, goes like this. Jesus suffers long and is kind. Jesus envies not. Jesus vaunts not himself. Jesus is not puffed up. Jesus does not behave himself unseemly. Seeks not his own. Jesus is not easily provoked. Jesus thinks no evil. Jesus rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Jesus bears all things. Jesus believes all things. Jesus hopes all things. Jesus endures all things. Jesus never fails. This verse, with Jesus in place of love, shows that the complete character of God and Jesus is perfect, undeniable, and unchanging love. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ, 
the same yesterday and today and forever. This verse amplifies Jesus' never-changing characteristic of love. Our reading verse is the second time John stated that God is love in his letter. He said God is love in 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 too. The Apostle John wrote multiple times about himself being the disciple that Jesus loved, showing that John truly understood that Jesus is love. Now, knowing all this, you should be dwelling in relationship with God through Jesus by the Holy Spirit living inside of you. When you do this, you will be dwelling in love and dwelling in God, and God will be dwelling in you. In closing, we leave you with a verse to meditate on, to dwell in God with confidence that your life will be a blessing to others through God's love being inside you. The Apostle Peter wrote about what happens when you dwell in God and Jesus and have more knowledge of Him. Peter's second letter, chapter 1, verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Right here, Peter takes your relationship with God that is completely filled with love when you truly know Him and he tells you that your grace and peace will be multiplied through the knowledge of God and Jesus. Start today by reading the Word of God daily along with praying to your Father in Heaven and worshiping Him by being thankful for everything He has and will do for you in your life. When you do these things regularly, you are fellowshipping with God and Jesus, which is the same as dwelling in Him. Doing this causes you to love people naturally more than you do by trying to love them. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for the love you have for us. Help us dwell in you, empowering us to love everyone the way you do, causing us to see your grace and peace multiplied in our lives. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Thank you for listening to Rejoicing Heart today. If this teaching has blessed you, please consider becoming a monthly partner to help us increase the ways we are proclaiming the Word of God. This is easy to do. Just visit our website at rejoicingheart.net. We thank you for your support. We leave you with more encouragement from the Apostle Paul from Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice.